Welcome everyone, in case we are live, I think we are live, maybe we are live, um, <clears throat> to this live stream, another fun Linux episode here of our increasingly not unsuccessful, not one man Linux distribution, aka T2. And something I teased already quite some weeks because I actually wanted to do this for actually a decade is fully automating our uh, nightly updates here of all the open source packages of all the lib x11 linux kernel and the other fun. I already automated this quite a bit over a decade ago, probably 2005 or something. And um, so for the over a decade, 15 years or so, we were already running on a server nightly uh, scanning all those source URLs like bash, like HTTP, FTP, GNU org and Linux kernel stuff. Actually, I didn't check Pulse Audio. Hope audio is fine. <coughs> AI in 2020. Anyway, so what we previously had is like this kind of script running, checking all the directories that is actually quite uh, tricky because uh, you would think yeah, it's super trivial, although probably near next to nobody is doing it except probably us. And now we fully automate this because uh, I have other things to do than every. So what I've done for a decade or 15 years, we have a T2 update mailing list where a couple of people have subscribed. Ironically, some of those not one man distributions subscribe to our T2 update mailing list. Actually, anyway, a couple of times I deleted some people that anyway, increasingly annoyed me. So actually a couple of other distributions hooked into our T2 update mailing list because uh, fun and profit or something of that sort. What this was doing is each morning at four on some of my servers scanning a sevens because otherwise 3000 packages take too long. So seven days a week, uh, seven, so each day A2 set um, sevens of those packages, except later I ch changed that each day L for all the libs and X for all the X11 stuff is checked daily because more updates. And um, so then we got emails um, that you probably saw on this channel already. Um, probably I could have also opened it, which probably I could actually do now here live on this channel. Probably let's hope that doesn't. Maybe I didn't. Okay, good that I would have exposed some names, which of course we don't want. So this is how this oops, update mailing lists looked each morning actually, by the way, this day. So this is what this automated tracker spit out for 15 years already. And uh, then some human like usually me, mostly me anyway, went through here and updated, updated all the stuff. And uh, of course, this is not too much of a pain. Uh, this is also why I didn't update this. So this is just in T2 highly automated, just P11 kit something and update this and test build it. And when it builds commit, it, doesn't look like too much of a deal, which is also why I have not op automated it more for 15 years, but it was like for 15 years, it's like, let's automate it more. Next month I do it and so yeah, 15 years passed. Uh, also lesson learned, freaking automate more much earlier in, in retrospect, I should have really done it 15 years ago. This was hilarious because there probably is some XK something automation matrix graph something of uh, where is it this maybe or something of that sort adventure where is this even automation versus when you need something theory uh, there is this uh, some kind of famous graph that is of course anyway you can imagine the graph of um, um, script linux ah, darn must be some off somewhere. Uh, okay, anyway, as usual, if you find it later, leave me know. Of course, there is some graph of um, first because automation is uh, quite some effort. So just doing it a, li it, uh, a little bit each day, what is this even, um, is like, of course, the first month or two months, it is less work to just do it each day because actually automation is quite tricky. And uh, this is why I finally doing it. And uh, how this works, so this is I've prepared this already the other day. Um, so even 15 years later, I just spent um, two or three, four hours preparing this for this channel. And now this is already running here. 
And uh, initially I called, so I already have an account uh, for this. I thought it's a good idea to have a dedicated Git or subversion, whatever you're using account. Initially I used auto for automated update stuff. And then after reading the first commits of auto, I said, this name sucks and I've chosen data. So now we have a data lieutenant commander anyway, um, doing our updates here. And um, of course, Apple would call it AI or Apple and Google and stuff. So could call it AI like Siri, right? Previous video, it's <laughs> just some glorified scripting fun. And just like our stuff here, some theoretically AI automatically intelligently updating our T2 packages. Um, this is surprisingly, um, oh wait a second, I can't use, can I use this VI, which VI is it even? Um, maybe I can't use this VI because nah, it keeps this text file busy with MAP or whatever, garbage. And so the old script is this, mail updates, this is my old script from like 2006, not really that much to see. Um, and of course in T2 all the stuff can be done really nicely because we have this really nicely passable, most minimal, fully automated stuff, not like other distributions that have a source tarball and put all the data files and control files in there or um, other Python code of build control stuff and so on and so forth. And so at T2 we have this key value stuff, um, plain ASCII files. In retrospect we would probably have done it a little bit differently maybe, like JSON or so, but it's still like key value, like you can think of it like array access of this braces for uh, angled braces for array like text uh, it like this mo mostly is you human readable stuff for the installer or web view and other fun stuff um, of course all of this stuff is not used by the build system the build system like mostly <laughs> only downloads the tarball here and then actually the build script stuff as seen on previous videos would just unpack it and do kind of automations like if there's configure or make file or mason and gem and cmake and stuff and use auto choose automated stuff like prefix and all the other fun stuff and only if you need to modify this for some reason for some bizarre configuration stuff then you can drop code in here but so updating in t2 is as simple as sc scanning all those urls of course partially hidden because now um, and uh, checking with this pattern, file name pattern, what kind of new tarballs are there and then certainly try to download this and try if it builds um, because certainly I wouldn't automatically commit stuff that doesn't build anymore. And what is rather tricky is so not only I improved this already a little bit and this is actually quite tricky because all the packages use other tarball names and uh, even odd and even numbering of stable and unstable. So I will most likely add a couple of more texts here of like by default this data will not choose uneven version numbers because historically most most historic packages ex except new um, new fancy stuff is using um, odd numbers for uh, developer better releases and stuff and then unfortunately some packages so not only do github urls not automatically load but I have already some SED expression similar to Apple Ziri the previous video of uh, Ziri glorified uh, re collection of regular expressions similar to that and um, so some of the stuff is already taken care of with decades of some regular expressions for download translations. I just, the other live stream a week ago, so added this for GitHub because this GitHub URLs, you cannot scan this with uh, GitHub project name, la la la, uh, version number. If you just curl like C URL, the Git URL without the tarball, you will get 404. This is not a valid path stuff. So you need to remove one more version number thing there anyway. So, yeah, there you see why we have done it this highly automatable and now in 2020 self-updating because I certainly have better things to do like writing microkernel and other fun stuff and getting more stuff to compile, P3, Octane, 
Just-In-Time-Compiler, uh, just Microkernel and all the other fun stuff. So for the next 15 and decades to come, I will not continue doing this um, anyway. So um, to show you more of this fun stuff, so this script, of course, similar to Apple Ziri, just some glorified uh, dialogue system of uh, here all the packages and then uh, just pass you some variable stuff of repository and package name. Probably I could even do this nicer without cut, but whatever. And then you hear the, see the alphabet. This is some tricky thing of shell scripting. Here's some, um, uh, would even need to think about this with SED and whatever this was using. And so this is some tricky thing of sevens, as I said, sevens alphabetically sorted thing of sevens package a day, except if it's starting with GNOME, KDE, L4 library and X4, X11 stuff. And then again, this is still running here, obviously. And um, test compiling some, not the most amazing, but anyway, um, Linux update. Um, then it's using the source update list that probably I have to rewrite fully. This was a test to do this in C++ instead of historic shell scripting. This was a failed attempt of, hey, does is automatically compiling a distribution more amazing in statically typed C++ and spoiler alert, no, it wasn't. And so this works. Let's make a new Tmux because I love Tmux. So this looks, um, oops, what if I also currently copy and paste it as some garbage. Let's do that again. I also, let's maybe vim this and remove this. I don't like this trailing stuff in the meantime. Uh, source update list. So for the Linux package, it would look like this. This is right now some C++ program. However, I will most likely rewrite this. Um, we have actually an even older scripts um, update um, what was it? Check package update or so, or version um, that I have not written. So this was a repository package name. Let's see what this spits out for. Uh, also on capital Linux. What no list for what? This pattern. What the heck? Hmm. Somehow it doesn't work for Linux or no list for what? Okay, this is some old script from maybe Clifford um, that uh, I just recently re rediscovered. Maybe I even knew this and forgot about this. As you see, maybe it's not if it was even the right thing. Um, does not work the most amazing. Um, apparently, maybe, whatever. Uh, this is probably most likely why we have written this C++ stuff here in source, but again, Although it's working, I want to much improve upon it. And in the meantime, I figured uh, C++, it, it was an attempt from decades ago when we were very huge C++ fans. But as you see, um, doing this in C++ is totally annoying and why you probably want to use shell, anything else, shell, Perl, Python, Lua, Ruby, whatever. Um, sh certainly shell pretty handy and maybe I will do it in Lua, but whatever. So. As this is how, from the more working sourcing, this is how the output is. And you see how tricky that is. You have in terms of many packages like, like Linux and others, many, many packages. And one complication, oh, by the way, there might even be an update. One complication is some packages like the Linux package are also more, um, more, uh, special in T2 because um, we patch them for saving download bandwidth. So they have two downloads. So such kind of packages, my new automatism like AKA data will not handle this. Although maybe I should have named this B2 or whatever or lore. But um, anyway, for the future, it's supposed to be data. So let's let Let's not stop with lesser names for that. And so in the future, we need to improve this to uh, fully handle uh, multiple source download stuff because that's certainly one main table with patches, certainly more tricky to handle. 
And um, aside from this, let's take a look here. So as you see, and right now I've only proof of concept tested this. And one complication that was not amazing is that there you see how complex the whole thing is because um, the last 15 years this download tracking stuff sent, for example, it, it was like the sorting was intelligent enough to understand that alpha, beta stuff, like additions to the file name usually were newer. Um, like for example, four, like one, two, three, um, whatever, with more stuff usually is new, newer, but then you also have alpha, beta release candidate stuff. This is a tricky part. So some package, some packages might have one, two, three, like lib, like lib gzip um, or gzip or whatever. They might have one, two, three, and then sometimes they have like ABC revision or JPEG and, and fun stuff. There you see the problem, the devil is in the detail and all the certainly huge bazaar of open source and each and every project rolling their own stuff. So this is only what I've done yesterday because I wanted to get this started here. Is it Actually, by the way, slightly tempted to hit Control C here because this is anyway a waste of resources. Um, so yeah, just plain old filtering alpha, beta, release candidate stuff out of that um, because uh, no point of trying that. And there you see, if you would write some scripting and put this into um, production, you really need to test this, otherwise it will run quite some havoc here. Havoc, havoc, havoc. Um, and update all like test alpha beta release candidate and hey, hey it builds and commits this. Um, so yeah quite some care needs to be taken there. This is why it's probably another week until I take it in full production like running it on a nightly on a server or something. And you see just here uh, the beauty of shell scripting, <laughs> beauty and beauty and yeah regular expression like Ziri mentions this already. So if there's a new version then um, so previously here was some code that would send an email here to this T2 update list and have some human like us read this and do this. And now instead of sending an email, I wired here the test built in to that. This is a new script I've done uh, like just, just the other day, super small of course, test build that. And um, then uh, so yeah, super small because T2 scripting and uh, mostly to do. So this is of course super, super minimal. Um, actually, I spent most time trying to make the scripts build target to work because usually you would use build target in T2 to build a job in this target of a distribution. However, I realized it doesn't um, <clears throat> return a proper status code or exit error code. So even if this fails right now, it returns non um, and zero exit uh, code. That certainly is not very helpful if you want to commit this. So I actually spent half of the time uh, trying to make build target return a proper exit code in, in case of error. But um, I gave up actually because it was so tricky with uh, this conditional and loops and this and and so another day I need to do this. So what I have done instead after playing with this for 40 minutes or something the other day, it's like, yeah, okay, whatever, another day. So I internally build target is using build package anyway. So I just call build package with the parameters, the arguments here with stage five config reference root auto change root here. This is what build target would use internally and build, tar build package of course returns a proper exit status for whether this was successful or not, just like another day theoretically to do, um, make build target properly return an exit code for all conditions. So of course it would in some conditions return an exit code, but not in all. So if this is successful, like if build, so um, we get called with package and version from this check for updates then uh, actually update this. This is creating um, a, um, a patch. This is patching this as you have seen here. I've just done this. Actually, we can do this um, also with Linux. So I just realized there's a new Linux update. So now someone in the major distributions would do quite some work, like maybe in Debian or SUSE. It's maybe in our job of 
updating the, the source table and controller data files here. It's just like five, what was it? Five, five, two or something. Um, maybe did I do this already or, or was it three? So much two, oops. No, then it was two, fine. Anyway, did we not commit this already or did I read this wrong? Okay, fine. Then I read this wrong. However, we had this other package. What was it? PK, PKI something. Where did I even? Um, no, not this. Ah, damn. So many packages. Anyway, so this this update package is patching the source file, and um, um, so as you see in in the scripts directory, we have quite some scripts for all the individual tasks, like update the package, like patching those, um, building a package, and all the other like scripts config and all the other fine uh, modules, like separated and modules that do their individual task. So update package, build target or build package test compilers. And if it compiles, then commit this also. Uh, for this, I added a couple of new options to commit. So usually this scripts commit would um, let's see, we probably have here something halfly updated like commit glibmm maybe, let's see, no, this is some random garbage that we can delete. Um, what is beep maybe, what is beep or not beep? No, this is also, this is probably some for my testing is some stuff that data, uh, some leftovers of data doing its thing and I'm hitting control C of something of that sort. So, Maybe pearl cut, maybe I remember I, so yeah. Um, so usually this scripts commit was designed for humans to take a look here, if this makes sense. And then like even edit here. So this certainly doesn't work for data doing this automatically. So I implemented dash F for force and additionally, so force for not asking for editing the commit message. This is reusing the, um, creating as a commit message of updated whatever something. So not doing this again, always reusing all the modules you have already. And additionally, I added here some um, additional option to pass additional options to subversion, for example, username data, previously known as auto. And um, I've done this so that on the server, even if I'm working on the server, that it's committing this with the dedicated username. Of course, this is universal, universal usable, and you could use it for other stuff if you work with T2 and need this options, for example. So always good to keep these options like universal, flexible, that they're also usable for other stuff. Um, so committing this desk, um, and here a little bit being careful of not accidentally committing more. So this update package should only modify the description file. Oh, so quite some drop frames, which YouTube server are we even using today? The primary server. I've even changed the latency so much. Now no, we have a data, but we still have garbage cable toxic internet stuff. Um, yeah, it's not our stuff. So thanks for commenting on this drop frame. So it's obviously just a uh, cable, so yeah, so much to why we shouldn't have copper cable and stuff. Let me just uh, switch to the primary server, see how that is going and grab a T while we are at it. So now over the primary YouTube in-guest server and fresh T. So for zero frames, yes, I even changed the latency to uh, regular instead of low latency. But as you see, that is also not the most helpful anyway. Yeah, already 80 frames because now. Anyway, so all in all, so um, as you see here already, uh, all in all, this is uh, starting to work. Uh, what have I done here though? Or maybe this is um, because we are most likely, I know, probably data wanted to commit something and we had this um, 
text file open, the stupid NVI probably, maybe. Anyway, uh, and even more drop frames there. So um, probably either the garbage um, peering of Vodafone Cable Germany here or YouTube, this primary service, uh, the secondary service, even worse. So then happy birthday, Mr. Bonk500. Greetings there. And welcome. So yeah, um, so far so good. There are some complications, as I mentioned, uh, some things to still improve. It's of course just a proof of concept. I've done the last two or three hours uh, yesterday and today and stuff. And um, so uh, some complications are of, oh, by the way, now data wants to commit something. Uh, the only thing is uh, on my system here, the subversion right now is wants to desperately use GNOME, um, GNOME Keyring. Um, so, so much to why, of course, GNOME Keyring good for security there on your desktop, just a little bit narrow. Then. So uh, data determines that the update one here live, live, live on YouTube of less pipe. Um, the only thing is because of it wants GNOME Keyring and nah, it now wants that I type some password um, to commit this, which usually should be fully automated, um, but nah. Uh, that was... So yeah, and uh, then this continues, so data now, well, except putting in the password, but Scanning this for updates uh, here, by the way, PyXDG probably. So there are a couple of complications of this that will I that I will uh, fully rule out the next days. Uh, also, 18% drop frames. Car. Ah, how can this be? So um, anyway, I hope the audio is not too broken. So then it's just like hanging uh, video feed of. Nah. Um, also, data thinks that uh, this compiles no pi xdg, and yeah, this compiles as you see. So there you see how amazing this is. Uh, T2 2020, T2 the first and probably only, maybe. Anyway, leave me in the comments below if not. But I, I would be surprised if others do this because just of their less nicely automate, fully automatically updatable um, stuff there on other Linux distributions. So. Um, yeah, if this would um, do this automatically now, then yeah, let's just, um, that would be probably that. And um, so yeah, if you, uh, also you see this already, uh, data has already committed to quite some stuff in our change log here, nicely visible. Um, today already uh, determined here, um, LSIP and uh, many of these updates I had previously scheduled on the data center. They were just did not compile for one reason or another. Uh, maybe I tried this uh, months ago because some of these updates are super old. So the chances are you have seen on previous videos on my data center usually 350 working changes of year. Yeah, it should be was a nightly update, it didn't just compile and yeah, whatever, YOLO, it's not important. So uh, also yesterday, so uh, OCR AD or, 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 or whatever you want to pronounce it, Viking, libv utils. Um, of course I committed also quite some because some stuff data wanted to do and then it didn't compile and either I tweaked it or I determined, yeah, it should usually compile just less com committed. But uh, some of this stuff I did some manual tinkering here. Yeah, here for example here, it didn't build because G, G, GDK uh, doc didn't build. So I, on top of seeing the data wanted to, did try it, it didn't build, and then I did some additional manual intervention there. But uh, all the other stuff, so data already did this and this, and from now on I have more time for P3, SG Octane, FPGAs, and you have even more updates and everything is totally amazing, um, I would say, anyway, if you're using T2 Linux um, to start with. And um, yeah, some complications are uh, some improvements, of course, right now, proof of concept, which again, I wanted to do for 15 years and now we've finally done it. Um, of course, this is also how you prototype, in my opinion, anyway, just start with the most 
try a little stuff, try it out, see what happens, and usually some, some shit happens, um, see what sticks and what doesn't. And so what we definitely need to do is, um, by default, I have this here already uh, in there, and yeah, data busy trying to compile bacon of whatever that is, no idea. And some stuff I have here probably to do of here. Um, before I put this into auto in, in full production, I will not only t clean this up a little bit and integrate this better and stuff, but also I need to change this to only um, try even numbers, um, like even, middle, uh, major, minor, patch level, something of, to avoid unstable versions. Certainly I don't want to data to commit, update everything to unstable garbage. Um, and then also uh, some stuff returns um, some really funny ver file names that right now for 15 years already confuse this automated nightly mailing stuff because, um, let me show you, some packages have, of course right now I just deleted this already, um, oh, maybe stuff here, yeah, so for example like this one, so I better Im need to improve this and most likely maybe even fully rewrite this version number checking. So right now it's in C++, we used it for 15 years, it's probably time to finally nuke it. Um, because so the libsnd file version, the problem is that uh, if we take a look here, package lib snd file, and the version is 1.0.28 right now, NT2 anyway. And then when we check here for updates, which we can also uh, use the same scripts of source, update lib snd file, and this is the stuff we are getting back. And of course, 1.0.28 is the latest version, but it also has a 64 something. So because the version comparison right now, and there you see why this is non-trivial and why I had this for 15 years on my to-do list and it's always like, yeah, eventually uh, so many corner cases and devil in the detail and uh, devil is in the detail. So I need to better improve this. So what I will most likely do, the problem is that this starts with apparently libsnd564 or something and then the version the version comparison is going through each number and the first number is 64 and saying hey 64 is larger than greater than one it's like hey this is an update so on there this is why right now most likely i will change this to only check for similar version patterns so that this wouldn't match so that i build a regular expression from the current version and um, build a regular expression only for each number uh, group, one number expression, and this uh, this way avoid matching this really. Uh, this is libsnd file is not the only package there. Really, you will be surprised how many packages have such kind of stuff. For example, um, right now I just here, yeah, for example, Pimon Debian, but also maybe this is. But um, maybe it's also some, okay, let's perf we've just done. There are a couple of more. There's also um, many others who have like ARM, like binaries. And then sometimes for some packages right now, the binary releases match because they have their something version number um, Win32 or Solaris and whatnot. And then sometimes depending on the, the naming they've chosen, the binary releases or other additional releases match. So yeah, I think this probably should be possible to uh, fully, mostly avoid. The problem is if we change this to, as I said, to build the version regular expression matching from this, then most likely, although we make it stronger of not using false positives too often, we will most likely miss some updates because then we, we make it more strict and the more strictness will most likely skip and miss some updates. But yeah, probably better not to try random garbage than missing one or two. Anyway, so yeah, this is the biggest thing, making this version matching stuff more error proof or less error prone. And um, yeah, then um, 
yeah, deploying this. Certainly, of course, uh, also data just figured out. Also, yeah, um, this I don't want. I know so. I will also introduce because this ISL, this update, I reverted. I've done this manually already a month ago. And then I noticed GCC breaks also yeah, open source in 2020 or 2019. You update some minor version number and then the major compiler component doesn't build anymore because yeah. And um, so there will there will be some additional flags. So right now we have already some check version stuff here in the package description. And to guide this automated testing, that mostly is check version URL, but it can also be pattern. And I think we have here check version pattern, for example, which we may not yet fully use anymore. So there will be a couple of more uh, like check version flex, most likely. So I will add check version flex and to add additional stuff, for example, this will be um, because by default, as I said, I will change this amazing automatisms to skip odd version numbers by default. And so if a package like, let's pull this on an example of um, libog, maybe let's see libog, um, also audio libog. And so yeah, 134, I guess this might be, uh, I hope at least it is stable or something of that sort. So there will be check version flex or something and then like odd okay or yeah this reads this looks strange um, um, yeah some kind of flag marker of telling data or amazing scripting AI that uh, odd version numbers are okay um, the, the concrete wording depends so odd, odd okay looks strange it's too much D's of O's of confusion. Um, yeah, um, need to think about this but precisely. It depends then on, but this is also the naming of usually the first name that comes to mind, like odd, okay, something is sometimes not the best. So it's always some brainstorming of what is the best name, what looks the best, what is the best to remember and uh, most professional and so on. So yeah, what is data doing? Data is Compiling here some, yeah, also, I guess it's just tried some really garbage version number of, yeah, four. So whatever, so lip sick plus plus was, was it lip sick plus plus? Yeah, uh, pulled here some really strange uh, full URL. But the good thing is this is not committing random garbage. It at least needs to download and test compile. So even if it's doing some random garbage, sometimes like, yeah, it doesn't, it will not work anyway. So just a couple of AMD Ryzen CPU cycles wasted warming the office. And um, yeah, so yeah, I hope you like this uh, stuff. Um, and um, probably the summary is better than um, developing this with you because this took already like three hours, even though the the script is rather tiny, but because I was for 40 minutes debugging with this build target to return an exit code. And then the stuff is running quite long because all the latency, even with the 400 Mbit DOCSIS cable of 4,020%. Yeah, I really wonder, um, most likely the next time I will tunnel this through the data center. I had a speed test running the last time. Let's maybe use this time fast speed test or something because usually we use. Um, so yeah, let's see what we have. This will of course cause quite some. Although yeah, today it's not. Although usually we use another one. So so much for that. Of course, this will cause quite some drop frames because this is using here. But yeah, can't make this stuff up. 2020, you have 432, or I am I'm not even sure what our upstream is. Change two times, need to check the contract. Um, either 32 Mbit or 40, 50. Um, also, this is only, does it have, does it have, oh no, it's measuring the upstream. Um, yeah, 30 Mbit upstream can't make this stuff up. Also, 
I'm not really sure who to blame if it's the segment overloaded or the peering of Vodafone cable stuff peering to YouTube or just the freaking YouTube servers so not making this upset. Um, it's not shabby internet, it's just, and then people wonder, can you, uh, Google Stadia is amazing, can you take a look at NVIDIA Play Remote, whatever, garbage, like, no. When, when I want a game, then I want a game somewhere, not in the office, and even in the office, can't even stream without some drop frame. So, yeah, maybe it's just YouTube overloaded, I don't know. Um, I debugged this the other day, it's certainly not neither the Ryzen, nor the router, nor the Switch. Um, so, yeah, whatever. Um, for the stream, I switched to normal latency, that also didn't help. But yeah, that is here the update, um, making T2 even more amazing. Um, certainly, in my opinion, was already the best and most vanilla, or like sushi, super amazingly sorted and whatnot, source distribution, and now it will be even more up to date, self updating because 2020, and then I have even more time for playing with the and develop, developing with the P3. Um, SG Octane, FPGAs, and all the fun stuff to come. I certainly will uh, keep you updated. Um, leave me in the comments below if you want to see all the live stuff. The problem is the live stuff, as I said, takes a couple of hours and then people are bored and stuff and uh, maybe the summary is nice enough anyway. I hope you uh, like the idea, appreciate the effort. As usual, leave me in the comments below what you think, uh, your comments, tips and tricks and whatnot. Um, Let's see what else do we have going on. Quite some comments that I probably should take a final look. Um, my thoughts on System D. Uh, Jeremy American asked my thoughts on System D. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of it. I've not even packaged it because yeah, it's not my uh, problem with System D. I agree with many critics that this is too much stuff in one package. Also, this, in my opinion, in my opinion, I rather have a microkernel system with more stability and address space uh, um, isolation and user space drivers. In my opinion, some of the well-known and big figures in the open source world innovate where no innovation was not really necessary. And in, in, in my opinion, I rather have user space drivers and the init was working for me and boot up speed and I, I don't need a combined init and cron with, with network integration and boot integration and home de integration. And for me, for my taste, it's too much stuff in, in one monolithic stuff. But um, yeah, probably said this before, but I'm only saying this because people ask. Um, but if someone wants system DNT2, then submit a patch and you can have it just like not really. You see, I've already so much time with keeping MIPS, Spark, RISC-V compiling and stuff updated. Um, here, for example, you see box backup. Um, some patch doesn't apply then so of course data will not take all of the work load away from us we still have to do some manual intervention and the emails will change so i will change the email updates to the mailing list to um, check for updates test build it if it builds commit it auto commit it and only if it doesn't build then send an email like old-fashioned email like hey there's an update i but in even improve this. So previously the email was, hey, there might be an update. The new email in a week or so when we put this into full production will be, hey, there is an update. I tried to compile it and this is the build error. So you even get like the, the last 10 lines of build log attached to the email and you see, hey, the patch didn't apply or some library was missing like, like GTK or whatever, or QT needs an update or didn't build. And um, yeah. And yeah, for example, here's a CD. I, I took a look at this already. This is a super vintage version because apparently nobody at T2 was using this XCD row stuff and uh, this, this patch didn't apply and then other stuff. So, but the good thing is that each day for the last 20 years, each morning breakfast and stuff, I did the T2 updates most of mo nearly every day, except very rare occasions. And now I have time Again, MIPS, MIPS Spark, uh, PowerPC and stuff. And finally tackling here all the other more interesting of data can't do it by itself because rediffing patches, playing some, some real intelligence and figuring out what's going on with the stuff. Uh, we were reading the comments, so what else do we have here? Um, we'll understand the joke, but 
Ja, Carlos, I understand the joke, um, 3950X, but will it run crisis? Yeah, certainly understand this joke. I said it a couple of, used the same joke of SJ Octane and PS3 and stuff, but yeah. Um, pro probably maybe I could try if the Sony Vario P will run Crisis, the uh, Atom, set series Atom in this ultra compact form factor previous video. I will most likely, uh, we had this video, Power VR driver with Quake 3, I will most likely see how well Quake 3 Arena is running on this ultra compact Sony Vario P with the to be a reverse engineered Power VR driver sometime soon. So. If you are into this kind of fun, more game and less professional, love this kind of fun, then don't forget to like and subscribe for this kind of fun. Let's see, um, something, customer, something, whatever. Um, yeah, Mr. Bong says drop frames already a meme here. Yeah, this is really, yeah, also, um, you see how fast and also failing Google, whatnot, maybe we should actually, uh, re maybe I should actually try, try to stream this remix or some remix service. Uh, I think this was the service, right? Maybe even we could then parallel stream to Twitch and YouTube. Um, certainly I, yeah, I will, I will do my job. I already investigated this more the other night and figured it's not getting lost in our office. Um, so yeah, but mm, whatever. Also, the other night when I tested this, uh, I was using the primary server of YouTube in Gestion there. And that night I tested this, uh, the, uh, did I say primary, I said secondary. I meant secondary. I was using the secondary. That night when I tested this more in depth, the primary server of YouTube was significantly better. So this points to YouTube might just be overloaded. This is why I already changed the latency from low latency to normal latency. I also didn't have uh, maybe maybe I try uh, previous a year ago. I sometimes tunneled through secure shell VPN through the data center. Maybe I try this again, um, or we try remix streaming service of um, parallelizing this to. Did I not? Why is this worth not loading this waste of stuff actually? Thought it's downloading this another day. Anyway, so yeah, um, I will continue to do my stuff, but each time I change something and think, hey, it, it worked in testing, then the next time I go live, it doesn't work as reliably. But anyway, we will continue to improve this. Um, 2020 internet in a capital, even if you have the highest, this is like literally the fastest internet except uh, vector DSL, which is uh, whatever. Uh, or then fiber, which fiber is super highly expensive. Uh, would uh, installation cost would be thousands of euro. Not spending two thousand uh, euro or something for fiber installation here, especially if I um, if we continue to grow like currently we grow, then maybe we move out of here in a year or two. So not spending two thousand dollar for uh, euro for fiber installation for somewhere I want to move out of. Not gonna gonna happen. Um, just like how Pulse Audio is dying here. Also Pulse Audio of, um, also Pulse Audio mostly not dying, only like getting some 44 one versus 48. Uh, also, it might not even be Pulse Audio's fault. It might also be Linux kernel versus Pulse Audio. And, but this is still not, yeah, monolith monolithic uh, drivers in, in um, 2020 and uh, whatnot. Anyway, maybe in a year or two, we live stream with our minor, uh, micro kernel, but time will show. Um, yeah, hi, Jim American. Uh, now I'm reading your your other. Um, I already answered your other um, question there of uh, System D. Um, also, if you have other thoughts to System D, but there are also priorities. My priority would be user space. I said this before, but re re reiterating, my priorities would be more stable and security, and not this. Re let's rebuild the user space of system of system and cron and logging and whatnot. It's like, yeah, we have other problems, Sherlock. We don't need to have some monolithic system, the monolith stuff of everything clobbered and, and UDEF and whatnot. It's hilarious, even networking can't make this stuff up. Um, I agree with other critics that is not the Unix philosophy. And in my experience, it usually works best out to keep modules separated, one like bootloader and kernel and not meshing everything together and 
in general, most people would certainly agree that it's not best practice and I don't see why it should be best, best practice there. Um, Carlos writes, uh, reading the T2 documentation, uh, Finnish Zenpro tried to install T2 and all. Yeah, uh, the documentation is, is a little bit uh, not as much updated, although we didn't change the basics in the last decade, so the handbook, the documentation mostly applies, uh, just like, yeah, not that much has changed, mostly. Um, hey, and it figured, oh, okay, there you see, this is exactly the program he live on YouTube, now data would want to update this to an unstable uh, odd number. This is exactly the thing, before I put this into production, I will um, make this by default, not use odd numbers, except if the package whitelists this, like, hey, I'm a package where the maintainer decided odd numbers are fine, are stable. Um, I would, actually, I grew up uh, two decades ago, this was like nearly every package used odd numbering was better. Testing, um, unstable, why this had to change or why not every, but there you see software developers in the internet, you can't even agree on the odd, num the odd version numbers are the, um, unstable test series, so yeah. Anyway, um, what else do we have here? Um, Mr. Bronk asks, developing stop using GCC and what do you think that most developers should stop using GCC? Well, some extensions are quite, quite helpful. Um, uh, glibc extensions are certainly super annoying. I think mostly the GNU C extensions are mostly a thing of the past in terms of GCC. I think the, some extensions are quite, quite useful and the useful extensions that are hard to not use for like low level code or other stuff are also implemented in Clang and Clang. So yeah. However, what is a little bit annoying is what in my opinion is more annoying is more and more developers are using Linux systems like uh, UDEV, like, like stuff in GNOME and KDE doesn't work or features are missing if you're not having UDEV or systemd or like using glib, um, like the, the GNOME C library stuff um, additionally. So that in my opinion is much more invasive nowadays than just C extensions of GNU libc or uh, GCC, but uh, yeah. As always, uh, yeah, reaching the end of this fun stream. Um, I will also, yeah, it's probably trying another odd number of, yeah, this is exactly, um, we'll do this next. Um, we are reaching the end of this live stream. Thanks for watching as always. I hope you learned something. And if you have any comments, tips and tricks and whatnot, leave it in the comments below, even if it's in a month or a year. Um, other, I usually read, try to read most of the comments and, um, if uh, even years later, uh, always, uh, I, I, even I learned stuff from comments. So if you have comments, just leave them there. They can only be helpful for me or others. So it's always appreciated. And I hope to see you soon for all the next videos and live streams and P3 Octane and RISC-V and FPGAs and all this fun stuff to come. Do I reuse? Um, what else do we have? Internet download is 50 Mbit, upload 25. Yeah, the, the thing is like DOCSIS cable is much less reliable than fiber, certainly, so fiber usually. Of course, it also depends on the peering. It can be that Vodafone cable here in Germany has this totally garbage peering, so it could be like even through the DOCSIS corks, copper, it goes fine, and then in the backbone peering connection stuff, the, the peering to YouTube is garbage, whatever. Um, the um, and um, what was DX? What is DXVK or a uh, welcome based implementation of R? Okay, you are for did you reuse? Um, no, not really, but we will for sure also continue with gaming stuff. Um, as I mentioned. Um, so all, I will also, uh, we will also do wine stuff here, even with, now, now that we save so much time each day with updates here on here, um, data wants to commit. That, that is a good thing, which by the way, I wonder if there is a GNOME menus 
uh, in between there actually update. So data wants to commit here some uneven version of Z. That is of course not. Hmm. Is there not three four? Hmm. Hmm. Whatever. Anyway, um, hey, there is a GNOME net status. So yeah, of course this depends, this is really the last word now, um, this all depends on having a fully built build of uh, all the reference system of all the GNOME and KDE and the problem is I have not updated GNOME and KDE for the last 15 years because yeah, YOLO whatever not using it and, and not too much enough time of yeah, automating this now. And we have done this monster live streams in a year ago of seven hours GNOME and seven hours uh, QT KDE update. Um, where my, my amazing wife even brought uh, some Asian, Asian food here from a restaurant because I was starving in seven hours mega live stream if you want to see that. And there you see how much time all this regular updates take. And although we have updated a lot of stuff on KDE and GNOME, not all of the stuff is compiling and not, not all of the stuff is compiling reliably due to dependency orders and stuff. So although some GNOME and KDE updates compiled back in the day, like last year, it did not fully build by itself in this reference build due to dependency order and stuff. So some of these updates would even compile if I would have all the KDE and GNOME stuff fully installed here. And this is another thing that I much rather, or you by the way, if you want KDE and GNOME, be my guest because personally not the greatest interest right now in GNOME KDE. But there you see time much better spent, automate, always also in accounting business, what, what, what not, automate what can be automated. I had another video already, automate whatever uh, you can automate um, and, and then spend your human resources on, on, less, on stuff that's less automatable like um, working on more serious stuff like risk driving. Lips Octane and fun stuff, but yeah. So update in production in some days, update in some days, and I hope to see you soon for all this fun stuff then.